I've always had headaches and they've always been quite focused around this part of my head. But in the last year, I've noticed that their intensity and frequency have become a lot worse. My instinct was telling me that there was something probably more to it. I had my appointment with the specialists and being told that I'd have to have surgery. <laughs> um, which I, sorry. Um, that's when reality kind of came to me then. The biggest thing for me is sort of being away from my children. But now I'm here, I just kind of want to get in, get done and get recovering. Morning, I. Even if the meningioma is benign, and given her young age, if left alone, it could grow relatively rapidly and directly threaten her life. It's an amazing amount of trust that you're placing with people that you don't really know. But I have every faith. Everybody ready? Yeah. One, two, three. OK. So is it good to start? Can I have a monopole, please? See, the, all the bone is abnormal here, so all this will go, so I may as well remove it now. See, see, see how different the bone is? Yeah, yeah. Okay, can I have the jerk, please? Well, the best thing that can happen is that we remove the tumour completely, but is surgery around the brain, and there is always risk to either not surviving the operation or becoming severely disabled. That's very good. In order to cure Gemma of the tumour, we will have to remove every little bit of the tissue that contains the tumour, if we can. To me, every little bit of the tumour that I can remove is, is worthwhile. Anything that requires force in a neurosurgical operation is not right. Neurosurgery has to be gentle. That's fine, I think, I think we're done. Repairing the dura can be quite straightforward. In Gemma's case, the dural repair is not straightforward at all. Careful, 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 careful. Oh, Mind what you're doing. I need to be very much aware of the needle, uh, its direction, the forces involved in propelling the needle in, in certain direction. So uh, I must not allow it to move, flip, slip. It, it just needs to do exactly what I want it to do. OK, so can I have the titanium now? To get the reconstruction right is important both uh, from the functional point of view, i.e. that the eye moves appropriately without any double vision, but also from the cosmetic point of view that the eyeball doesn't sit too deeply in the eye socket. One has to be quite exact in shaping the titanium to reconstruct the orbit. Yes, it requires one to be meticulous, but when one considers that it is the house for the eye, one needs to give it what it takes. That's, that's pretty close now. It's not bad at all. Okay, let's fix it here. So it also came together quite nicely. Is this and that's it? Okay. Good. Um,
the end of Germany's operation, I feel more energetic than I would expect. It is, I guess, the adrenaline is still flowing, and we, we achieved what we wanted to achieve, or better, but you kind of always worry about what things can still go wrong. It's, it's just the nature of, uh, of neurosurgery. It was a real pleasure to be able to share this uh, with Gemma. And true joy to see Gemma's eyes uh, lighten up. Couldn't be any, um, any better, really. Big um, weight off my shoulders. He says, like, 20% chance for it to regrow over 10 years. So <laughs> stop worrying now. <laughs> and so they'll scan me in three months, and then probably a year then. So all good. Best thing possible. Yeah, yeah. Hey, babe. Have a nice day, I'm not having a sleepover, your Wally, this time. <laughs> All right, I'll be home soon. Love you. Bye.